now on BBC One The News with Peter Sissons. Diana, Princess of Wales, lies at rest. Buried in a private ceremony on a small island in a lake at her family home in Northamptonshire. And at the end of an extraordinary day, Downing Street confirmed tonight that shortly before she died, the Prime Minister had offered the Princess and she'd accepted the role of a special ambassador for Britain. It's believed that such a role, which she'd long aspired to, was offered at a meeting at Chequers some weeks ago. Today, however, all that was academic. Gavin Esler reports on the heartfelt and unique funeral that the people gave her. The solemn day of national and personal mourning began precisely on time with the gun carriage bearing Diana's coffin through the streets, punctuated occasionally by cries of bless you, bless you and we love you. On the coffin lay wreaths of lilies and the saddest word on any funeral dedication, money. Members of the royal family, led by the Queen, stood with her subjects united in mourning, waiting patiently for the cortege. The Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Charles and his sons, and Diana's brother, Earl Spencer, quietly walked behind the gun carriage, the most difficult moment in the worst week in the lives of the two young princes. For the first time in history, the Union flag flew at half-mast on Buckingham Palace. Meanwhile, at the Abbey, the Queen arrived with the Queen Mother, and guests who ranged from Muhammad al-Fayed, father of Diana's companion Dodi, to the Prime Minister and Sherry Blair. After a four-mile journey through the streets, exactly on time, the service began. Elton John sang his tribute. Goodbye, grow, may you well grow in our hearts. The great place where lives are torn apart. After tearful applause, Earl Spencer used his funeral oration to renew criticism of the press and to promise the young princes would not be stifled by royal duty. We will not allow them to suffer the anguish that used regularly to drive you to tearful despair. And beyond that, on behalf of your mother and sisters, I pledge that we, your blood family, will do all we can to continue the imaginative and loving way in which you are steering these two exceptional young men, so that their souls are not simply immersed by duty and tradition, but can sing openly as you planned. Further waves of spontaneous applause swept through the crowds outside and then into the abbey utterly unprecedented for a royal funeral. As the coffin was carried outside, the entire country paused for a minute's silence. Then Diana, Princess of Wales, was carried for the last time through the streets. The route's a place of pilgrimage, attracting crowds northwards along the motorway. Her last journey was perfumed by flowers as it wound through the heart of England to the family estate where this most public figure was laid to rest out of the public eye. At peace, at last. But those lighting candles in the wind at Westminster Abbey cannot forget a princess who created great happiness yet suffered much and remains forever young. Gavin Esler, BBC News. And tonight mourners continue to lay flowers at the gates of London's royal palaces. They're still queuing at St James's Palace to sign the books of remembrance that will be part of the permanent memorial to Diana Princess of Wales. It's almost exactly a week ago that tragedy struck. Seven days which changed Britain. From the BBC newsroom, good night. Whose beauty, both internal and external, will never be extinguished from our minds.
Thank you.